Most of the color grading tutorials on YouTube, including my own, talk about using footage from big fancy cameras with big sensors, often shooting in log or raw formats, but the reality is that's not the only kind of footage that we should know how to deal with. Recently, I did a video on the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone, and I had a lot of questions about how I deal with color grading the footage from that camera. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step process on how I deal with drone footage. And like in my previous color grading video, I'm not just gonna be showing you one clip. I've actually got four different clips lined up so you can see how I would deal with each of those for their specific situation. This is so you can actually understand my process for grading rather than just trying to replicate the settings that I have for one specific clip that might not match your footage. So secure the cup and let's grade some drone footage. Okay, so I'm here in DaVinci Resolve, but a lot of the color grading properties that I'm gonna show you in this video will carry over to whatever platform you're using as long as you understand the tools that are there. You might need to use a slightly different tool than what I used for each procedure, but you should be able to get this done regardless of what platform you're on. So first things first, let's take a look at the footage that we've got here. Our first shot is this lighthouse. We've got these cool little speed ramp things that happen in the middle of it. And you might notice that this shot is looking flat. All four of these shots I shot in D-Cine-like profile, which is not necessarily a log profile. It's just a little bit flatter than your typical kind of standard looking. Next shot we've got here was when I was at Sony Kondo, just kind of a straight up shot while we were playing with the oversized Jenga down at the bottom here. Next shot is also from Kondo going up over the lake. It's got a bit of a like dolly zoom effect on it. And then the final one is this shot when I was up at a fire tower from a hike that I did, zooming past and then looking at this beautiful view that we've got. So kicking things off with this lighthouse, this is actually one of the more complicated ones because the lighting is constantly changing because it's going around this lighthouse and it was at golden hour. So we've got this really bright part and then we've got this darker part and then we've got this part where we've got the sun blasting right on the one side. So we're gonna have to check all of these different kind of angles over and over again to make sure that our grade is working no matter which angle we're at. So let's hop down into the color page here. The first step that I'm gonna take for this one is I'm just going to hit option S a couple of times so that I've got three nodes up here. This first node is going to be our kind of main grade node. The second one I'm going to call CST, which stands for color space transform. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen me use something like that for log footage. We're gonna do something similar here. And then the last one I'm just gonna call finisher. We're actually gonna start on our color space transform. And the goal of this node is to get it from this D-Cine like this kind of flatter profile and make it look a little bit more like normal footage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our curves and I'm just going to pull down on my shadows and up on my highlights a little bit. And you can see I'm watching my waveform down in the bottom right corner here. So if you're not seeing this, you can get down to it from here. And I'm just gonna start to kind of make this look a little bit more like what I feel like it looked like on the day of. So I'm gonna bring up my saturation. And then, like I said, with this shot specifically, I'm gonna to wanna to kinda of check this throughout to make sure that, especially when we hit this bright spot here, I'm not pushing this too high. Now I was clipping when we're going straight against the sun here, I was definitely clipping. So we're gonna to have to let some of that clip, but we wanna make it look as pleasing as possible. It's actually not too bad. Yeah, I like that a lot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my finisher node. And what I'm gonna do here is give it just like a simple kind of like film fade. Later on, we're gonna put some film looks on this. So we're gonna use some LUTs and some other methods as well. But for now, what I wanna do is just kind of like fake it. And the way that you can do that is again, in your curves, you can either pull up from the bottom and you get this kind of like faded black look. Or what I like to do is use this low soft and high soft. So what we're gonna do is pull low soft up about, I don't know, halfway or something like that, just until it doesn't look too too, 
too intense, maybe something like that. And then the high soft, just a little bit. And we're gonna notice that more when we get to that really bright part. So you can see in the waveform what that's doing, it's just pulling down a little bit of those highs, just so that they don't look so intense. They're not like clipping fully white. Like the name suggests, it just softens them out a little bit. And so same with the lows there. So if we go to, let's say this section here, and I just disable and enable that, you can see it just kind of adds a little bit of a fade to those low areas. And then again, when we go back to here, it just kind of softens out, especially these edges along this really, really bright reflection that we've got here. It just kind of makes that a little bit more gray and a little bit less so bright white in your face. And that is technically more of a stylistic thing. And the reason that I do that after my CST is because I want the finisher to be looking at what's coming from the CST node. If you don't already know, nodes in this specific case, these are called serial nodes the ones that I did by hitting option and S, they're feeding into each other. So the finisher is looking at what's coming out of the CST. So after I did those adjustments to make it look like kind of normal footage. So then I want to be dealing with the highlights and the shadows and softening those out at the very end because otherwise it might be looking at some other part of the picture that won't end up being the actual highlights and shadows at the end. Hopefully that made sense. Real quick, I wanna say a huge thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. Envato Elements is a service that offers an absolutely staggering amount of different asset downloads to make your life easier. They've got stock footage and motion graphics, video templates for all the major editing platforms, music, sound effects, graphics, fonts, LUTs, titles, transitions. They've even got presets and other assets for photographers and things like email templates to build your business. It's actually a one-stop shop for everything you could possibly need. And the best part is it's all under one affordable subscription and you get unlimited downloads from their library of millions of options. So instead of getting a subscription service for every single type of asset that you might need, you can find everything in one place, saving you a ton of time and money in the process. And you never have to worry about licensing. With Envato Elements, you can be sure that everything you download is covered for personal and commercial use, both during and even after your subscription ends for the projects that you made while you were a subscriber. So if you think that having access to millions of useful assets at your fingertips sounds like something that would be good for you, head to the link in the description to check out Envato Elements today. Huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Video. And now that we've got kind of just like a generally decent looking shot, we can add the grade going into the CST. And there's not a whole lot that I wanna do to this. It, it is looking pretty good, but maybe we can make these colors pop a little bit. So I'm gonna go into my color warper. You can also do this using your hue versus saturation and hue versus hue curves down here, but I like to use the color warper. And I'm just gonna hover over this big building here. So it's gonna show me what color down in the color warper, you can see there's an indicator down there. And it's actually kind of in between two lines here. So what I'm gonna do is bump this up to 16. So once I kind of know where that color is, and you can see that down in the color warper, it's giving me the indication of which one I should move if I want to move that specific color. I'm actually gonna choose one that's a little bit less saturated and move it upwards. And then I'm gonna grab the one that it would have been and kind of move it back. Cause I don't wanna oversaturate stuff that's already quite saturated. I just wanna bring up the stuff in the same color range that is a little bit less saturated and that's gonna make it feel a bit more vibrant. And since we really want this red lighthouse to pop, so you can see it, it's really subtle, but in here at this angle, if I pull out that part of the grade and then I pop it in, it just made that red pop a little bit extra. I'd love to see a little bit of this yellowy orange a little bit more intense. So I'm gonna grab these lower saturation levels and pull them up just a little bit and maybe pull them a little bit more towards orange. And then just that whole line over towards orange a little bit. And that's making the sunset look really, really golden. Okay, let's do something about these blues. I'm gonna take a couple of these points. So I'm just holding command while I click on these. So I'm selecting multiple, and then I can go over to my hue here and I can rotate them all. So you can see if I rotate them this way, they get a little bit more purple. 
I rotate them this way, they get a little bit more teal. Actually, it's not quite giving me what I want. I'm gonna grab one more, rotate them teal. There we go, so you can see the water it's gotten a little bit more teal. You can see it up in the sky here too. We're separating that orange and the teal. And now I would almost say that I've gone a little bit overboard on the saturation. So I'm gonna go back to my CST here because I know I bumped it up in that. And I'm just gonna pull this back, let's say to 75. And that's looking pretty good. So here's our first shot. <laughs> So this is before and after. Maybe add a couple of different angles, before and after, before and after. All right, moving on to our second shot here. I'm just gonna quickly find a hero shot. And I think it's just the very last one. We're gonna add a couple of nodes again. So it's either option S or if you want to right click, go to add node, add serial. I'm actually gonna add four this time. So the reason that I used four nodes on this one is because we're actually gonna be using the film looks built into DaVinci Resolve. They're just LUTs, but we need to do a special process to make them work properly. The first thing that we need to do is transform our footage so that it is in Cineon film log. And so what that looks like is we use our color space transform. If you're not seeing that, it's effects. And then typically it'll look like this and you can search for it up here. So color space transform and then drag it on. I actually have it marked as a favorite and then you can just show your favorites. So now I'm only seeing like the four or five that I normally use. So now I'm gonna drag that onto number three here, call that CST. And then under output gamma, I want Cineon. And you can set your input if you want like Rec 709, Gamma 2.4, which is what we're doing, but you can also leave it as use timeline if you want. So you can see that it's transformed it to even more of a flat image. And then if we go to number four here, we're gonna go to the left and hit LUTs. Under our LUTs panel, we can see film looks. So there are two different options in here. There's a 3513 from Fujifilm, or there's a 2383 from Kodak. And then there are just some different versions of that. So these top ones are meant for DCI-P3. The bottom ones are meant for Rec. 709. So we're gonna use the Rec. 709 ones. And then as we look across, we've got a warm version, a middle version, and then the cooler version. And same thing with the other one. So we're actually gonna choose the Rec. 709 2383, and I'm gonna choose the middle one because I think it looks the best on this. And so when I double click that, it applies it to that fourth node because I had that highlighted. So there's before I did that and then there's after. So it's given it some of the film qualities from that LUT. And sometimes I might wanna dial back the kind of film look on it. And so typically what I would do is go into the key here and then I would go to key output and just dial back whatever node I want to. But because this is a two node process, when I do that, let's say I dial it to 0.5, it's actually making it look more flat because the CST node before it made it into that Cineon film log. So what we actually need to do here is I'm gonna highlight both of them and I'm gonna right click and hit create compound node. Now this kind of turned them into this two nodes within a node and you can expand that again if you want so you can show compound node and you can mess with them in there if you want to, but also this gives me the ability to dial back my key output on both of them, which is kind of cool. So here's the full effect, and then if I want to go 50%, I can dial that back a little bit. I'm gonna leave it all the way up for now, and we're gonna go backwards here. So now this is our CST, the same that we did on the previous one, so we need to get this kind of more normal looking. So again, I'm gonna go to my curves, and I'm just gonna start to kind of work things until they look proper for me. Me. Just giving it a bit of an S curve here. Getting a little bit of like high clipping going on there, but I think that was actually just clipped to start with. So I'm hitting option D to disable all of the nodes and I can see there, yeah, it looks like those were probably just clipped to start with. So there's not a whole lot you can do. If I just dial back the highlights a little bit and then again, I wanna get a little bit of saturation going. And this is looking really nice. So before and then after, and then if we take away the film look, you can see how much contrast that pumps into it. 
So we might wanna dial that back a little bit later, but let's do our grade on our first node here and see what we like. So let's call that grade. And I'm gonna hop back into my color warper. Actually, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go over to my offset here and I'm just gonna warm up the whole scene a little bit by pushing it to the left. So that's looking a little bit better. It's got a warmer vibe, but look at how the green is looking really yellow in spots. What I wanna do is get our green looking like a nice vibrant green, like almost like this is like a, a resort or something like that. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hover over here again and you can see in the bottom on the color warper where that specific color is. And it's on this line here and it's right down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that line downwards towards green. And I'm also going to grab down closer to the bottom and just like saturate it a little bit. There, now our green is really popping. And then this blue over here too, I feel like could get pumped up a little bit more. So let's grab that, which was right down here. I'm just gonna pull it so it's a little bit more saturated. Again, I like the color warper a lot because it holds the most saturated point. And if you find that the stuff that was already saturated is getting too much, you can always pull that back by grabbing the stuff closer to the edge here. So now I think in the process of grabbing the like yellows that were in our green areas, I think we've also shifted some of this stuff on the paths here. And I just wanna get that looking a little bit more gray. So if I hover over here, it's just in this kind of yellowy orange area, but really close to the desaturated section. So I'm actually gonna pull that less saturated and a little bit over towards the orange. Maybe I'll do all my yellows a little bit up. Just give it a little bit of separation between those colors. I feel like I've gone a little far with my greens. Let's just dial it back just a little bit. So this is before the grade and then after the grade. I think that's looking pretty good. So we've got without the grade and with the grade. We've got without the film look and with the film look. It still might be a little intense, so maybe we'll do that thing that I was showing you before. Where we go to key and we just dial this back to like, let's say 0.7. No, not even that much, like 0.85. There we go. Excellent. So before and after just the grade before and after. Two clips down, let's move on to this third one. For this one, I'm gonna do four as well. We're gonna do that same process. We're gonna grab the Cineon color space transform onto there, search for Cineon. Then on this final one, maybe let's go with the uh, Fujifilm this time. I think I'm going to use the warmer one in this case. And then let's combine those into a compound node so that we can always dial it back if we want to. And then let's do our color space transform. <laughs> it's not a real color space transform. It's just me taking it from decine like, which is again, like I said, kind of a flatter profile into looking like regular footage. So I'm going to mostly bump up. And a little bit of saturation. So I bumped that up to 85. I actually like that a little bit better. And then just out of curiosity, I'm also going to pull up the shadows here a little bit and see if I can get a little bit more of that hill in there. There, I think that's looking quite a bit better. So now let's do our grade. And I'm actually gonna do this this time for those of you who maybe don't have the color warper, you can also do everything that I was doing or pretty much everything in your curves. So your hue versus hue, hue versus saturation. They might be called HSL depending on what program you're using. So what we're gonna do here is I want to saturate the oranginess in these mountains back here a little bit. First of all, I'm gonna grab my offset just warm this up a little bit again, something like that. 
And then I'm going to actually use my eyedropper. And if you're not seeing this, it's just under here. It's called qualifier. And I'm just going to drop right there. You can see where that spike is. So that's gonna be that color. I actually want a wider zone. So I'm gonna click on red and then I'm gonna click on this kind of tealy color here and it's gonna make a bunch of points across for me. And then I'm gonna grab right where that point was and just saturate it a little bit. I'm actually finding that that part is a little bit brighter than I'd like it. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this hue versus luminance. So what that's doing is changing based on the hue, based on the color, it's changing the brightness. So I'm gonna grab that and pull it back a little bit. It's gonna kind of deepen that orange a little bit on the mountains. Now let's go to hue versus hue. So this is changing the color based on the color. So I'm gonna take something that's blue. So if I click blue here, it's gonna create these three points for me. I actually maybe wanna click the green here and remove that one by right clicking so I can get my marker right where the colors are. And then I can play around with, do I want my blues to be crazy? teal, yellow, green, whatever. I can do pretty much anything here. Just gonna shift this up just a little bit. Try and be really subtle with it. And then I'm gonna go into my hue versus luminance again. I'm gonna grab the same area. Just make it a little bit darker. Deepen those blues in the sky. I think I'd love to see a little bit more contrast in these mountains. So what I'm gonna do is go to my curves again, and I'm gonna click on a bright part of the mountains, like here, Then I'm gonna click on a darker part of the mountains, like here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast between the two by dragging the low one down and the bright one up a little bit. And when you add contrast like that, it also adds some saturation to it. So I'm actually gonna go back to my saturation, hue versus saturation here. And I'm gonna pull back that a little bit. Eh, I think maybe it's still a little oversaturated. There we go. Now I'm feeling good. So we've got the total before. We added the film look. We added the CST to make it look a little bit more normal and then we've got our color grade. And then finally, we've got this shot that goes past the fire tower. And this shot actually looks not dissimilar to the previous shot. So I'm gonna see if I can copy it over. So all I'm gonna do is middle click on this previous one, or you can right click and hit apply grade and see what happens. Now those blues are way too intense. There's a lot of saturation going on here. So I'm gonna go into my CST and I'm gonna dial back saturation, let's say to 60. And sometimes you can get away with this. Sometimes you don't need to go through the whole process. As you can see, I kind of approach it similarly regardless, but sometimes you can get away with copying and pasting. Now, I think maybe one thing that we can do is decompose this compound node. So that's gonna turn it back into its two different nodes. And then we can change which LUT we're using. So I'm gonna go back to this uh, Kodak Rec. 709 one. And maybe just war use the warm one so it warms the whole thing up a little bit. And then I'm gonna create a compound node again for those. Yeah, I like that film look a little bit better than the other one. And so for this one, we've got before the grade, we've got before the film look, and before the CST. So this is totally before and totally after. So that is my start to finish process for color grading my drone footage. I hope that was helpful for you. If I went too fast over anything or anything didn't seem clear to you, make sure to leave a comment down below and ask me questions. I'm happy to try and help as much as I can. And if you have any other ideas for color grading tutorials that you wanna see in the future, make sure to let me know down there as well. And on your way down there, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.